Hey guys, what's up? So this is my RGB mask project that is made from soldering 5 PCBs together. This RGB mask has 52 WS2812 B LEDs and they are controlled by an ESP8266 microcontroller module. Does this work as an actual face mask? No, not really, but we can wear a normal face mask beneath this RGB mask and stay safe. I first made a cardboard mask and then use its measurement for making a PCB design which have soldering pads on edge of PCB. By putting PCBs together in the right order and soldering them at a certain angle, we can combine two or more PCBs to create a PCB structure or a shape. With this method, we can make anything with PCBs. We just need to follow basic geometry and that is pretty much it. Kinda like my previous RGB glasses project. We can even make RGB hat with PCBs. Comment if you want to see a PCB hat with RGBs on it. These are the things that I use in this project. Custom PCBs which were provided by JLC PCB. ESP12F module. 10K registers. WS2812B LEDs. AMS1117 voltage regulator, 10 UF capacitor, 1 UF capacitor, 100 NF capacitor, SMT reflow hot plate, soldering paste, and patience. So the first question here is, why didn't I use flexible PCBs and choose FR4 instead? The answer is pretty simple. Flexible PCBs are not sturdy enough for this kind of project, so I didn't use them. FR4 on the other hand is pretty hard and can sustain more stress and tear, so it's far better than using flexible PCB. I first prepared a cardboard mask with this template and then prepared the schematic for this project based on this shape. Now, this project required 5 PCBs and making them all separately is not really a hard thing. But ordering 5 PCBs will cost more than ordering a single huge PCB. So I prepared this PCB in such a way that a single huge PCB can be cut down into 5 different PCB shapes without affecting the connection of the whole board. To accomplish this feat, I prepared schematic in this way. Each section have components and the breakout point is this line. At edge of the first PCB, there are three connectors for VCC, D-out and ground. And on the starting edge of second PCB, three connectors are there as well for VCC, D-in and ground. VCC of first PCB get soldered with the VCC of second PCB. The ground of first PCB will get soldered with the ground of second PCB. And the D-out from the first PCB get soldered on the D-in of the second PCB. I use this method to connect multiple PCBs together along with its electrical component and electronics wiring. After finishing the PCB design, which was this, I send its PCB Gerber data to JLC PCB for samples and receive them after a few weeks. PCBs that I received were nice as expected. JLC PCB, you guys rock. Check them out if you need great PCB service for less cost. So before starting the PCB assembly, let me tell you guys why I use ESP12F instead of any small microcontroller like Arduino board for example. Well the reason is pretty simple. I wanted to control this PCB mask with Wi-Fi and using an Arduino board will cause wireless connectivity issue. And that won't work for this wearable project. So to keep things small and simple, I use a minimal ESP12F setup to control 52 WS2812B RGB LEDs with Wi-Fi. I also added an AMS1117 to buck down the 3.7V from the battery side to 3.3V as our ESP12F module is 3.3V tolerant and supplying voltage more than 33 will burn the board. Here's the schematic of this project, which you can download from this project's page. Now let's move on to the next step, which is the PCB assembly. First, I cut the PCB into 5 different pieces with a cutter.
After this, we just need to put the components on the board. But before that, we have to add solder paste to the pad of each component one by one. Here's a pro tip, don't be a fool like me and order stencil for this process as adding solder paste one by one on each pad without proper tools is a pain in the ass. After adding solder paste, just place all the LEDs and capacitor in their assigned place. Be extra careful while placing the LEDs in the right order as the LED won't work if they are not placed in the right order. SMD capacitor doesn't need to be placed in special orientation as they don't have defined polarity. So just place them in any orientation. After placing the component, we just need to put this PCB on the reflow hot plate. The hot plate heats this PCB up to the solder paste melting temperature and that is pretty much what happens in the SMD process. Now we just need to redo this whole process for all the remaining PCB pieces. We just need to add solder paste to each component pad and add components on it. This process is long so I'm gonna skip to the main part which is the result of this hot plate process. So these are the 5 PCB that has been reflow properly. Now for testing each board's LED connectivity, I soldered 3 wires on PCB's VCC, day-in and ground pads and use a Pro Micro loaded with a basic NeoPixel test sketch. For each PCB, connectivity points are different as each PCB have 2 different LED array placed on them which doesn't have connectivity between their D-out and D-in pads. Also the code will be different for each PCB as they don't have same number of LEDs on them. For example, here's a PCB with 7 LEDs on one side and this is another PCB with 6 LEDs on one side. This is not really an issue as for testing such PCBs we can add one extra wire for data in pin. By this method, I tested each PCB's LED connectivity. After checking the connectivity of each PCB, we can now move on to the next process which is the PCB final assembly. For the final assembly, we have to put two PCBs at a certain angle and then solder all of their pads in the following way. Watch this process carefully.
Okay, so we have now soldered all the PCBs together. And the end result of our project so far is this mask made by soldering 5 PCBs together at a certain angle. Now let's upload a test sketch to the mask brain, which is the ESP12F module. And for that, I will use a Node MCU programmer. I already have prepared a video about this board, so do check that out. Let's just say that this Node MCU board is used to flash other ESP8266 board without adding flash and reset buttons. We can directly plug this Node MCU board onto the programming header pins of this mask. VCC, Ground, Reset, GPIO0, TX and RX pin are being used here. I uploaded the same sketch as before, but I changed the number of LEDs to 52 LEDs this time. And our setup is finally working. Now the main code is basically this web server sketch that I use for few of my similar projects. This web server has a color palette which we can select any color from and the ESP12F will trigger that color in the WS2812B array. We have to upload this sketch into our PCB mask. After uploading this sketch, open serial monitor. You will see the IP address of this ESP12F module. Copy this IP address and open that in any browser. And you will see this web server. Select any color from the color palette and the LED color will change according to it. Also, this sketch needs a few name tweaks. Now this is better. Now to finish this mask project, I added an elastic cord on both sides by tying them up in the square slots provided. After this, I glued this 400 milliampere lithium polymer cell to this mask. Also, you can use a small lipo cell instead of this big one. Also, we need to add a reset switch for the ESP module, USB port for charging this battery, and a battery connector with a soldering iron. And our PCB mask is finally completed. Now just plug the battery on the connector and press the reset button once. After doing this, it will get connected with the Wi-Fi router and now we can just open the web server to toggle the LED. And for doing that, I will be using my iPad, but you can use any device. And that is pretty much it for today guys. I hope this project was fun. If yes, then do not forget to hit that subscribe button. All the documents related to this project like code, schematic file, the board Gerber data can be found on this project's page. The link is in video description. And I'll be back.